Hello friends, welcome to Academy Live episode 27 and today we have a guest here today. Hello! Hello! Welcome! Very nice to be here. We have Martin uh, Botvidsson, uh, a extremely talented uh, still life photographer, oh, I would say. Thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, uh, Martin has uh, uh, a U YouTube channel, uh, which is called Botvidsson, so uh, I really recommend you to check it out. We've talked about it in a couple of earlier episodes, but if you're into still life photography, I could really recommend your channel. Thank you. And, uh, and, and, and so we're actually going to shoot today. We gave you a little challenge, a pretty yeah. tough one, I think. It's a tough one. <laughs> Very interesting. So, uh, but if we look at today's agenda, it looks a little something like this. Uh, will you talk about your channel? And mm -hmm. uh, I, I cannot do more than just recommend people to go in and look at it, because it's, it's very informative. You have a very laid back style. Yes. Uh, and also funny, which I like. Uh, it's a bit quirky every now and then. Um, but that's all, all part of fun. And, uh, uh, but most importantly, you know light. Uh, and you know what you're talking about. So uh, that's what's really cool. And, uh, and then we're going we're gonna to look at some images that you've taken. We're going to talk about those. Uh, yes. We'll take a look a little bit about on the gear that you're using. Talk about that. Yeah. And if we have time, a little bit on the workflow. And, and most importantly, at the end of the, uh, this, this session, uh, I've asked you for three tips and yeah. tricks. Um, and, and that will really make a difference for uh, not only still life photographers. I felt now that, you, now, uh, that I know which they are, yeah. they are the broads are really good for any photographer, I would say. Yes, uh, and most problem. importantly, we're going to shoot. Yes. Yes. Are you excited? Yes, very <laughs> excited. <laughs> uh, and, 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 um, and also, please, you know, pop in your questions. Uh, it's going to be a little bit uh, uh, in the comment fields and we'll try to respond to them. It will be a little bit rock and roll. Mm -hmm. um, we will, here you see the setup that we have uh, prepared. And uh, so the challenge was basically you only got one light. Yes, uh, only one light. Only one light. And uh, you only got a B10. Yes. Uh, I was pl initially planning on giving you only an A1, but I, I felt <laughs> maybe that was not really fair. <laughs> It but might have worked. You know. Actually, no, now I that I... I don't think that would be a problem. I, I actually think, now that I look at it, you might actually pull it off with this. I think so. And, um, and then also the challenge is that you have a really shiny object. Yes, extremely shiny. I don't... Yes, it's very challenging. Yeah. <laughs> uh, reflecting everything. Everything reflects. I mean, uh, which we noticed as we were preparing here uh, right before the... Uh, uh, going live. I mean, if you put one of our tobacco things in, in, the, in there, you immediately see it. Yes. So, so every little thing reflects. So, so that would be really interesting to see. But uh, going back and, and talking a little bit about uh, you, you do a lot of still life uh, photography. Yes. And now we already get uh, the question, where is his coffee? Yeah, I know. He, he did get the coffee <laughs> earlier. I have one before. Yeah. I always stick to water. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's true. He always walks around with his little cup of uh, coffee uh, <laughs> when he's doing this. But you, um, you shoot a lot of, uh, yeah, what should I say, um, watches, perfume bottles, yeah. uh, and uh, food as well. Food as well, yes. Um, Which is also still life photography in one yes, way. Yes, I would call it that, absolutely. And, and you are working uh, quite often, I've seen at least on your channel, with the with the, uh, Guide, Guide, uh, Michelin. Guide Michelin or Guide Rouge uh, three-star restaurant. The only three-star restaurant in Sweden, yeah. actually. Uh, yes, Francien. Uh, Top restaurant. Yeah. We we do a lot of work, um, a lot of uh, food, and also yeah. a bit of video. But and my question to you then: Do you get to eat it when you're done? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, <laughs> yes, often we do. We you know we, when they turn the, when the <laughs> chefs oh, turn oh. the back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, the food disappeared. <laughs> no, why waste it? You know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. And it's like uh, it's like heaven. You know, it's fantastic. Yeah, well, I'm sure. I've never been there uh, yet. But yes. Now I, yes, you should really go there. It's fantastic. But I mean, I was looking at it, uh, and you had to book. I mean, it's, it's months ahead. It's yeah. really difficult to get the table there. Yes, it is. So they got to be good. Yes. Um, and uh, uh, and you're on your channel. You have different types of videos, right? So you have one that the way you do <laughs> tutorials, right? You yes. Yeah, by myself, yes, I do tutorials. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I also have this uh, called Sub's Choice. Yes. And this is actually the whole idea with the channel that the guys who are subscribing, I want to invite them yep. to come to the studio and they will bring something. And then I will uh, show how to light it in a nice way. Mm. It can be. In a simple way, in a bit, and then we take it up to a bit more advanced. Yeah. And then we record it, and then I put it on YouTube. So this is the initial idea I had. You know, I want to interact with the subscribers. Yeah. Not only me standing there. Which I think that's also why, why <coughs> I, I, I wanted to have you here on, on, on Academy Live, is that I know that you are, um, you are interacting a lot with your uh, uh, with your viewers, like similar to, to us on, on this channel, both yeah. me and David, we, we respond to questions and, and absolutely, that's, yeah. I answer everything. Yeah, always, because it's it's it, it's that's um, that's the fun part of it when you yes, and, and you have people like uh, all the friends that I see logging in here. We have uh, uh, people from Nigeria, Slovakia, wow. Tennessee, and of course Mark in New Jersey. Hello, Denmark, uh, and then. Mr. Shi uh, Thin Penumbra, as we call him, uh, <laughs> in, in Japan, uh, who is a, a, a loyal viewer as well, which is a lot of fun. And we actually met him live when we were over in... Uh, in hmm. uh, so we, when we did some workshops and seminars there. So that was a lot of fun. So it's a lot of fun. And that's really, I mean, it's you guys are making the show. So I see my friend Martin. Hello, Slovakia. You have a lot of nice Martins to here too. Yes, a lot of Martins. You have, and uh, <laughs> this Martin, and we also have the Martin Anderson here. Yes. So that's cool. Uh, so uh, we talked about that, uh, you, and so you do your uh, subs choice, and you also do your own tutorials, but then you also take it to the next step. You also share with, uh, with the viewers uh, what you do with the pictures afterwards, the post-production. Ah, because um, subscribers ask for this extremely much. They yeah. wanted to see what I do after the shoot with the, with the pictures. Um, it's a bit tricky to do these tutorials because they become very, very long often. So I have yeah. to try to squeeze them down and do it quick. So that's the main challenge overall for the channel to keep the videos a bit shorter because uh, yeah. I try to keep them around 15 minutes maximum. But it's hard when you're, it's so much fun, so. <laughs> yes, and it's, uh, but yeah, I started to do the, the retouching and the editing. Yeah. Yes. So there's a lot of, a uh, lot of good learnings. Uh, oh no, we got the biggest fan is in Bergen. <laughs> Welcome Norway, you, you represent Norway today, Jörn. And uh, we got Spain here in Czech Republic as well. Uh, so that's a lot of, lot of people from all, oh, we got Oregon here. Oh. Yeah, I lived in, in Portland, Oregon, mm -hmm. uh, before I moved back to Sweden. That's oh. how we got Columbus, Ohio, all over. So anyway, I'm sure you guys are <coughs> curious on, on what we are going to do. And I think um, I got, there's so many things uh, we can talk about, let's, but let's spend some time on the shoot. And, uh, and then we talk about uh, the other stuff uh, after the shoot. Because for me, it's really the shoot is the interesting part. Yes. So, so I'm going to uh, grab the one camera, which is on one of those gimbals. Gimbals, exactly. So I'm going to walk around. And uh, good for you guys. You don't have to see my ugly face that much today. <laughs> <laughs> if, but if you really want to, there's 26 hours of me 
uh, on uh, Profoto's Facebook page on the video so you can see every single episode. Uh, and since this is episode number 27, we got 26 hours of me. Uh, oh, we got Holly here as well from England. He, Holly was uh, a guest here and we had a little bit of trouble with, the, with sound, so we need to get Holly over here again and, uh, and redo that, uh, that show. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Mm. Uh, so good episode. It was a good episode, yeah. But unfortunately, David and uh, Holly's microphone were on the same frequency, so uh -huh. you can just guess what happens. Okay. Uh, but I blame the operator; <laughs> takes full responsibility for that. <laughs> that was my bad. Um, so, um, just quickly, gear-wise, you normally you shoot with uh, uh, cameras. That's a good thing. Yes. And you shoot with uh, two different brands, right? Yes, I shoot with Canon and Hasselblad. Yeah. Or Hasselblad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, yes, when for the cha channel, I try to keep it, uh, hold it to the Canon camera because it's a good live view function, everything. And um, for client work, I use Hasselblad. Yeah. And then uh, Pro Photo flashes. Yep. I'm a face one guy myself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. I shoot with face. Uh, and, uh, That's uh, it's, uh, really something. Yeah, I, I like the, uh, the face camera a lot. And because and it has a built in, um, the built in trigger. And uh, uh, so we do a lot of uh, production with the, with the face ones. And then, of oh. course, we use their software, Capture One. Yes. Which is really yes, I also use that one. Yeah. Uh, except when I go with Hasselblad, I use Focus. Focus. Yeah. Yes. Cool. And then um, uh, you use uh, flashes. Yes. Uh, and let me guess, do you use Profoto? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which, which is a kind of a, a coincidence. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's not that you're using uh, 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 Profoto just because that you, want, uh, that you want to be invited to this, but <laughs> you were using Profoto before that uh, as yes. well. Yes. And uh, um, uh, you use all kind of Profoto here, right? You have both... Uh, how does your, your gear, I mean, what, what type? You, you All the way from generators? And yes, I have a generator, uh, older one. Um, what is it called? Pro 7A, 2400 watts, yep. I guess. And I have a couple of heads for that one, two yeah. uh, Pro uh, 7 heads. And then I have, um, yes, the, we talked before, this, uh, the, the multi-spot multi -spot that I connect to, to that one. Yep. And then I also have uh, two D2s, 500 watt yep. seconds. And uh, also I have three D1s. Ah, okay. Um, so I, yeah, I use them, it's a bit, Depends on what I'm doing, really. So no, no battery-driven ones. It's all no. mains. Oh, okay, so that kind of interesting. You got the even yeah. more difficult challenge than today. You are, uh, uh, you have a more a, a tougher since we're using the B10. I use. I have the Profoto backpack. You know this yeah. heavy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> backpack that is crazy to. Oh, but yeah. it's good. It, it, works, it works. You know, but uh, it would be nice to have some. Uh, so we got a question here on the, from Andrew regarding what phase one setup uh, I use. Well, so I use the uh, the XF house, which I really like the XF house, and uh, and then I have uh, the IQ three back, uh, the hundred megapixel. I've been really looking into uh, upgrading to the hundred and fifty wow. or the trichromatic, but. Uh, maybe I will see. I'm trying to be strong and not to do that, but because the, the, the 100 megapixel is just fantastic. Oh, here we have Johan Falkenström popping in. There's a guy that I'm uh, really, really fun to uh, I follow him on, on, on Instagram, and he's, mm -hmm. he's been shooting for I might be lying now or, or say coming up with wrong, so you just correct me in the, in the comments, but about like a year. Um, and uh, so not too long, and he's uh, very, very creative. He's using all kinds of stuff, you know, cardboard and, you know, stuff you have at home. Nice. And, and not with any, 
you know, really expensive uh, equipment mm -hmm. and tons of uh, th uh, uh, equipment, because it's easy when you have it. I mean, and that's what, I mean, quite often with, with Profoto, it makes your photography life easier. Yes. Uh, and because you can do most of the things, you know, all the way from a, a burning cat in a bathtub to, <laughs> or, you know, flashlights or, uh, but it's more difficult. Yes. Uh, and, but Johan does a really good job in being very creative with his work. So pat on the shoulder for you, Johan, you do a great job. And the, the reason why I use Profoto is they, they are consistent and they are re reliable. Yeah. You know, it's, it always works. You, need, you cannot come out to a client with homemade stuff. You, know, you need to have uh, stuff that work all the time. And really, really yeah. that's why you're using it. You know. But that was enough of gear. Now I think let's go over to, to that area the over camera. there. And, and let's take a look at what we have. Okay, plan. Now, so I'm going to have the empty frame for a couple of seconds, and I'm going to grab this guy. Might be a little bit shaky for you. Uh, so the setup we have here is basically we have a camera. Today you're shooting with a Canon 5D Mark IV. Yeah, and um, it's tethered. It's oh, tethered up to going to um, capture capture one version 12. Yes. And we have a 100 millimeter macro lens from Canon. Yeah, which is a really cool still life uh, lens. Yes, I like it a lot. So, and then we have some other interesting stuff here. Uh, we have gloves, for example. Yes, that's very good to have. And why is that? Because uh, what we're shooting today, it's this, um, it's a mascara a product from um, uh, L'Oreal yeah. and it's very shiny <laughs> yes, and uh, yeah. <laughs> as soon as you touch it with your hands you mess it up so it's very important with to have prints yes. and so and you need to have the gloves cotton gloves and then we have an air duster yeah it's good to have also blow away some dust and then we have a drill we're not going to give away exactly why we have a drill but we are actually going to use that one yeah. today <laughs> and um, and then we have one light, which is uh, the B10. The B10. That's the only one you gave me, uh -huh. Anders. <laughs> Got to be, it can't be too easy. And mm. let's see if I can, uh, if you can see there, it's a... It's a grid on, yeah. Yeah, it's a grid on it. Yes. And it's on a C stand. And then we have actually, what we have done is, let's see now. Uh, we have cheated a little bit. Yes. Uh, we have actually set everything up in a way that we, we get to shoot and then we'll kind of undress the picture. Yes. And we show you the differences that all these little bits and pieces do. Yes. Uh, you have a huge panel here, which is diffusion. Yes, it's a diffusion. It's uh, from Savage. Yeah. Um, it's a quite thick one. Uh, it's a bit... Uh, challenging for this flash but uh, there was no problem because this kills actually two stops of light it's a oh. bit overkill it doesn't have to be this thick but i, I i'm waiting for uh, i'm I ordered the the medium this is the heavy weight one yeah. so it kills a lot of light don't do this <laughs> but it works if you have a very powerful flash it's no problem and uh, i'm gonna walk around and see and then we did put a a little black flag Yes, here. this was because we had this light, yeah. um, it was a bit too much to the left, so it was a bit uh, left heavy with the light, so we just created a, a simple vignette, yeah. so it's not too much light on that side, so it's blocking a bit. And, and then we got two, fla two yeah. f uh, white uh, flags or two reflective uh, surfaces, yes. and they are uh, just simply use the clamp and, uh, and you keep it up. One is a foam board and the other one is just a piece of paper. Yes. So that's a really easy, uh, easy way to either lighten up the image yes. or uh, to create a reflection or to uh, make it look complex so the client pays more money. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> throw in stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> throw in stuff. That's what Daniel Norton at Adorama always says. Yes. Throw in stuff and it makes, it makes it look uh, expensive. So is there anything else you'd like to talk about in this setup, Martin? Um, no. I think we covered. 
I think, yes, it's uh, not that uh, advanced, but um, every piece will have an important function, yeah? Yeah, and, and that's the thing also with the white ones. I mean, they, they create additional light sources. So one light source in this case becomes three light sources. Yes. In a way. And, um, and now in order to... So we take uh, the first... Let's, let's turn light. everything on. So I'm going to go here and pop it on. Get that one on. And this is on. So I will walk over to the computer and switch over to capture one. And, and maybe you can just yes. turn it around so that you see stuff. Here we see Martin turning a Mac. So, shall we take... So should I turn off the lights? And um, or, or, uh, since we have... I mean, the one thing is with reflective areas is that everything uh, that you have, any light, will actually will reflect in it. Yes, when so we not... I mean... It will not go into the picture because the camera will, you know, we have this kill it. Yeah. kill it. So we will have a black frame. If we take a shot now um, without the flash, we take the first one, see if there was something come up. What setting did we have? F18. Okay, it was a bit reflecting actually. That's interesting. So that was see. because maybe we had ISO 400. Or yeah, but we needed that. So, so, so maybe let me just dim down the lights. Ah, sorry, I had it was the wrong setting on the camera. Now it's a manual setting, and now we have ah. f11, one two hundred of a second, and ISO four hundred, and yes. we have a black frame. It was exactly. on, it was on bulb mode. Ooh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so then we don't have to turn off the lights, basically. No, no. actually not. Okay, um, cool. So now everybody's been looking at that black frame. Black frame. And let's, uh, let's turn on, yes, let's take a shot with the flash. So I'll pop over to, is it on? Oh, did you uh, turn it off, uh, the remote? Yeah, it's on now. Testing. Yep. Oh, low battery. Let's go see how far we can get. And this okay. is the shot. Yeah, so it's... Uh, Here we have the shot. On. I can see that we get a bit of reflection from the, you see some few small ones. So, yeah. it's, so it's always good to be in the dark, of course. Yeah. Um, and we will see this when we per turn on the live view. Because um, I always work with the live view. Let's make this a bit bigger. And then we need to change to the other setting, right? Yes, and we need to turn on the. We need to turn on the modeling light. Modeling light. So we see what we're doing. So. Whew. Yes. Now we're in live view. Yeah. And. Um, Let's switch over to... Because now I really think this whole, the, old, the ambient light is going in, so we should really shut... Yeah. At so least turn them down a bit. Yes. Because they go into the picture. And uh, I think we do that. Whoa. Now we're in the dark. But the, it, that's... Because now we see very clearly that we only see what the B10 does. This is the modeling light, because this is uh, not the, the shot. This is actually the, the live view. I put my hand here. So this is the modeling light. Yeah. And we see and exactly. And this is how cozy it is right now in the studio. Yes. Okay. Um, should we take away maybe one by one to show what the different yeah, part... Yeah, exactly. So we, so we have the final shot here. Uh, yes. and, and if we... Uh, let's see, let's go jump over to... Yes, this is the, this is the shot. We, we can take one Ooh, with... But, but uh, 
are we going to do the final final with the... Ah, maybe we take a part and then we just put it back and then we do the final. <coughs> yeah, I know what, <laughs> I don't know what you mean. <laughs> so, or should we put it in now? Let's put it in. Yes, let's, let's do, do the it. final shot. So, so I'm going to go back to this, uh, this camera here. So the idea is, uh, from that shot that you just saw, we're actually going to make the area around a little bit more interesting. Exactly. And we will add some water. And I just have to see, so we're in... Yes, yeah, so it's not champagne, it's just plain water in that glass. I will take a shot just to see that we are back. Yes, that's looking good. And now... <laughs> so tell me, what, what's your crazy idea here? I, just so that, the, 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 the shot is nice, but you wanted to kick it up a little notch more. Yes, to do something extra. So I just will pour in some water around this product and try not to pour it over the product. This doesn't make me nervous at all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's only live. You know. Dave, yeah, exactly. David is, if he's watching, he's, uh, David is away uh, at the photo school teaching and uh, so I'm sure he's laughing because he knows how nervous I get with stuff like this. <laughs> I will take a shot and see what we will get. And as you see, Okay, so we jump over to, there it's, we go. It's a bit messy, but it's, it's fine because it's, it, it's so nice with, this, uh, with the diffused uh, material reflecting inside the water. You know, yeah. Into the water. I can fix this. Maybe we can go back, back to live view, actually. Um, I will take another one. Try to yes, it's it's the water is gliding a bit out of the frame, but it's fine. Yeah, it's looking. You see how nice it looks. This is the reflection from the diffusion. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we can go to live view, and I, then I can. Um, so let me. The live view window. Yeah. There we are. A bit brighter, because if you see, the B10 here. If I move, move it out. Immediately, so let's see. Okay, so, so let's, let's go with the live view again. Do, the, do that again. You see when I move this, yeah. and it comes in over this water. And if we take away this diffusion, and suddenly, it doesn't look that fun at all. No. And especially the, the product gets very interesting. Yes, because it's shiny. Yeah. Um, I always say there is only two things to light, actually. Okay. Shiny objects and matte objects. There is nothing else. That's all you need to learn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> shiny objects and matte objects. Because you yeah. see, yes, it looks like a disaster now. Because yeah. now we have... If All small scratches and everything is visible. And this part, this yeah. is the flash just reflecting in this shiny product. So it's just reflecting this small part. So we need to put on a diffusion to make this gradient. Yeah. Um, so if I put it back, you know, this makes all the difference. Yeah. But then you have another trick up your sleeve, right? Which one was that? The drill. Ah, I forgot about the drill. <laughs> then I need to go back to shooting mode. And I was hoping to have a bit more, I will add a bit more water. And the drill. Because I want to make a bit of, we'll see if this will succeed. Okay, let's see. Maybe. <laughs> Did we get Maybe. any movement in the water? Yes, a bit. Ah, that's kind of cool. 
So let me shift over. So what I did, I just Oops, you took a drill machine and uh, made some vibrations in the water. That's all I did. I tried to capture that. And here's how it looks like. Let's shift over. So there we see, yeah. Now we see the, the waves. Yeah. I wish there was a bit more, yeah. It's a bit messy, but uh, you know, it's live. Yeah, Just exactly. testing a bit. Yes, you see all the vibrations from the, the drill machines and the kind of waves. Yeah. And then, uh, so, uh, uh, I'm thinking... Actually, I think we should... Um, it's a bit bright there, but it's fine. We, should we show, should we take away these uh, boards from the side to show what they are doing or yes. something so, like that? So, yeah, point at the, the boards. So we have uh, some boards here. Uh, see, see a bigger one and a smaller one. Uh, we saw the diffusion, what difference it made. And... Uh, maybe I go back to live view while we are showing this. But maybe it is if you take a picture and we take one away and we, we see it ah. we flip from picture to picture. Absolutely. So we go over uh, to there. So here we have the complete image. And we see that there are gradients here. I will take here. a shot. It's a bit bright actually. Take another one. Yeah. And if you now, if you remove uh, one of the uh, panels, so let's let's see. Uh, so which one are you going to remove first? I will. I can take away the one at the back here. This one, okay. Then I will take a shot. This one just it helped the. It was this reflection here. Yes, exactly. And if we if we go back, you see this reflection on the side here. Yes. And then I can take away the other one. And I will take another shot. And now this reflection disappeared. Exactly. So that's basically what those two pieces of cardboard is. If you can see the image where uh, you see that one came back and then this one came back. Just to help. To get the 3D feel in the yes. picture. And, uh, so it's not completely dark on that side. That's why we did that. Um, yes. Cool. Should we... Uh, uh, I'll bring up the... Uh, the lights. The lights again. And, uh, and then we'll look at some images. Yes, and this is actually... Uh, That's the final, final. That's the final one. Put this guy here. There okay. we go. Okay. And we shift over like that, and we take a seat again. Yes. So uh, a bit uh, quick and dirty. Yeah. <laughs> quick <always>. and dirty, <laughs> and uh, and as you can see, that was made now with one light only, one uh, B1, and uh, uh, and some diffusion and some flags, black and white flags. And, and, and that's kind of what the image looked like at the end of the day. Uh, with some vibrations and, uh, uh, and re reflections. And a couple of things that you were looking at when we were setting it up, it was to make sure that the L'Oreal uh, logo, for example, was visible. Yes, precisely. Um, How do you control that? Well, you mean how this one will be shown? I mean, yeah. I mean, we were because we uh, we had a couple of times when it was gone, 
So is it very basically you, you pull down the power a little bit, right? Yes, we were we had it too bright, so we would we put it down, and that also helped the the gradient to become nicer. Now I see. I think this is a bit moved, uh, but uh, yeah, if you go up, you can see it's a bit uh, too flat. We had it, but it's it's a question of uh, like, where do we have? There, it's not as flat on that image. Yes, it's so. A bit different. Exactly, this one, and uh, yes, this was a from before we tested, yes, it's a bit, just to, it's, uh, it's a question of millimeters, yeah? Yeah, and, and, and that's also, what, I mean, part of the, the whole trick with, uh, uh, with still life photography, it is all about millimeters and patience and time. Yes, absolutely. You, because that's uh, really what what uh, uh, what you need when you do this. Absolutely, a lot of time and testing and testing a yeah. lot. And let's see if we have some uh, some questions. Uh, product you're blending many photo style is more common than than one picture shoot style. Which style do you guys prefer? Or blending many f different styles of photo. Well, I mean, uh, so so. Uh, oh, I need. I see. So, so doing like composite images when you blend several. Uh, that. Uh, so the question is basically: Do you now we take this is one shot only? Yeah. Uh, and, and there are a couple of things that you normally would do with the image like this. You probably first of all do focus stacking. Yes. What is focus stacking? Well, that's. When you you want to have everything sharp in the image, so you have to take many shots. You you put the if you have this phone, you want to shoot it. You make sure that you set the focus here, and then you go through the product to and the end take, of the shot. And you take many shots. Yes. And you move the the focal point kind of. Yes, it's there are different ways of doing this. Actually, I just built. Um, like, um, how do you say, a slider. I have a slider and I put my camera on top of the slider and then I programmed it to move extremely slow and then I programmed so it would take a shot precisely, exactly between every shot and so everything is doing by itself. Ooh. And then we, the image will become perfect, you know. And also in the software, I know in Focus you can do it uh, in the software, you mm -hmm. move the switching the focal uh, point, it's a tiny step, and then you can go through the image instead of sitting. Because this and is moving, not, yeah. I, I've been doing this on my channel and I'm missing a bit, you know, so it's better to do it in the software or with a, with a slider. Automatic slider, automatic and, slider. And, and another way is when you blend several images, for example, if you have a complex image where you, you do one gradient at a time and then you put you take like use one light you do one gradient you, you move it you take another gradient exactly if i have uh, if there is one spot on the image and i feel like wow this is what a fantastic gradient this looks fantastic and then there is another area a bit screwed up and then i just take the shot and then i you put them together. Comp them together afterwards yeah. and take the best parts of. This is very common in uh, still life photography, actually. Yeah. Especially with these tiny objects, it's hard to get everything exactly. Yeah. In one shot. Uh, and do we have <coughs> any other questions? Oh, the water looked like a head with mouth open. Where is the mouth? Is this mouth? Oh. Oh, maybe, oh, maybe oh here, maybe. Oh, this is yeah, the yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like that. It's one of those uh, ink, <laughs> ink blob uh, tests. Yes. I see, uh, you, know, you, see, you go for something really crazy. Um, and, mm. um, oh, and here's one was ask, look, asking, Joan was asking how, how you did the small waves, and now he knows. It's a drill. It's a drill, but uh, make sure that you have a drill machine with this uh, how is it called? Hammer function. Hammer, yeah. Have you tried, uh, Mark asked, have you tried uh, loud music to get that effect? Yes, 
interesting that you're saying this because I, you can do so many interesting things with different frequencies mm -hmm. in the water, and they become very different. But uh, today, we can, maybe another day, we'll do yeah. it with. It's very, <laughs> it's very good way to do it actually, and uh, you don't have to now when you using the drill machine it starts to shake, shake and it's, then it's things not, move it's not the best yeah. way but it's fun but you can also watch a movie like Johan uh, says uh, you can play the T-Rex scene in Jurassic Park <laughs> ah doom, doom. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so absolutely that, that would be and cool you just place the subwoofer uh, yeah and oh yes so we should show what the, the black flag do ah. so maybe we point out in the image uh, so it's ah, basically it, on the left side. It was nothing real. It, it, it's actually only this. Am I? Yeah, you, you can see that. It's only this side. We try because it was too bright. I don't know if I. We didn't take it away, but maybe we yeah, can. Yeah, no, it's it's gone. It's gone. Ah, okay. It's so um, without the flag, it will be this uh, light because the flash all is the way through. Yeah, is placed around somewhere around here the light so it was totally bright so yeah. I thought it would look nice to make a vignette yeah that was all so that was it Martin uh, uh, Pitonak who asked the question uh, <laughs> and then uh, what surface is the mascara on it's it's a piece of paper right it's um, or like a cardboard paper? no it's more like a <coughs> <coughs> sorry it's more like a Plasticky. I found it in a like a not hardware store. Like an arts, yes. uh, arts craft. It's just a sheet of. It's like it's a bit plasticky. I don't, don't okay. know exactly. Like what a it laminate, is. laminate yes. or something. I always do this. I go into hardware stores and to uh, this do-it-yourself stores and Look I buy it. stuff. Maybe I can use this someday. You know. Yeah. And the reason why we had this is because we added the water and we wanted to. You know, you ha need to have a black surface under it. We could actually use the table I see now. But yeah, but you, d but you didn't know what no. what uh, you were going to meet here. So, so yes. what what the surface is. So you, you yeah. brought that with you, which is. And smart. I think it's also kind of nice that it's not shiny, really. You see, it's matte, so yeah, it so becomes it. like a, a spot, um, soft spot, because yeah. it's matte material, and then the water is extremely shiny, and the and the product is shiny, so it's a bit of a contrast between them. So. And here you see the uh, the camera settings as well. We we have uh, one two hundredth of a second maximum for the uh, Canon. Yeah, and uh, then uh, F sixteen. Ah, we went up sixteen there. on that picture. But then the others we had F eleven, so yeah. somewhere between F eleven yeah. F sixteen, so pretty high up, and then ISO four hundred. Yeah. Uh, so that was the was some question on the shutter speed. Is How is this particular Prophoto strobe different from other strobes on the market? Ooh, uh, actually, I would Martin uh, Pitonak, I would recommend you to look at episode is it 23 or 24 where we actually talk about the B10. There's a full hour going through all the ins and outs of why the B10 is different from other strobes. So there are a lot of things. It's really compact, it's small, it, it's, it takes up you know, not, not much more space than a, uh, than a decent lens, so you can put it in a camera bag. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a, a, <coughs> a fixed, fixed light that you can change the temperature with, uh, which is really cool. Uh, and it's, it's again, it's a, a very, very compact uh, unit and, and it fits into the Prophoto ecosystem with all the remotes and all the light shapers that we have behind us here. So it's a really neat little flash. And Martin also says that, for, I don't know if... Oh, he also often have problems with overheating. Uh, on the, when the modding light is on, how is Prophoto handling this? Well, so in, in the B10's case, it's actually, the modeling light is a, uh, uh, a LED light. So you can keep it on for as long as you want, because it will not overheat. Um, and now we are running it on batteries only, but you can also you put it on uh, uh, using the mains outlets, you can put the cord in it and, yeah, and that's and great. It. Uh, if you want to run the modeling light for a longer period of time. Then really I'll nice with the LED lights, I feel, because I know what you're saying with uh, some other flashes, it can get very, very hot with this yeah. other lights, so it will be really nice with some 
But I guess the LED light is not power enough for the big fl bigger flashes. Yeah, and also if you compare with like the D2s or the D1s or the Pro heads, you have halogen lamps yeah. uh, lighting there, so really, really strong, powerful. Um, so I mean, the strongest one is at 500 watt seconds. Oh, it's at 500 watts. Uh, so it's really strong yeah. on the Pro head plus. And uh, so, of course, there's a difference. And there's a slight difference. We noticed that when we were uh, fiddling around with the live view. Yeah. There is a small difference between what the modeling light produces and what the actual flash produces. And that's mainly because of the placement of the flash tube and the placement yes. of the LEDs. So there, there will be a small difference. And also, specifically, when you are shooting something very difficult, like a shiny object, where every little nitty gritty yes. thing will be shown. So. Yeah. Uh, maybe that was not really nice to you to put you through a, a challenge that tough, but <laughs> but I think you pulled it off really, uh, really well. Yes. And, uh, and well, you know, it's you just need a light source. I mean, I can. You can use any. Should you c use any kind of light? You know. Yeah. Uh, that works. And then. Uh, Formica or Wilson Art sells these plati plastic laminate surfaces. That's ah. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, what amount of B10 power did you use? I think it was 8.2. 8.2, yeah. So we were up at uh, 8.2, which equals to, I mean, from at 10, it's 250 watt seconds. Mm -hmm. So at 9, it's 125. Uh, so 8.2, we're probably at the speed, at the same power level as in uh, Pro 4 A1, somewhere mm -hmm. around 76 uh, watt seconds, maybe. Uh, and then we have how much processing would go into that photo before it went to print? Ah, so if you if you take a look at this picture now, how, what would you what would you do in in post? <laughs> in this shot, yeah. Well, um, there there are a couple of things that would not have happened <laughs> if it wasn't live and we were not if I wasn't stressing you that hard. Like those little, uh, there's some drop, droplets yes. of water that you would probably take uh, away. Yeah, we'll pr probably clean up this. And the, the ideal, it, the problem here I see is that the water, uh, it comes down. And yeah. it, it you would probably have a, a, a table level table. Label table yeah. uh, but f if I should use, uh, probably I will, uh, we, can sh we should do this put it up maybe or show it and then I can clean this up and you know I will look for small things to edit but I, normally I don't edit that much yeah I mean because um, that's what I've also noticed because I mean you, you do spend some time on getting the lights right and, and all the gradients correct and so forth yes. and and uh, uh, that saves you time basically in post absolutely and uh, in post you can spend l l many hours it's just uh, some dust cleaning and yeah. this kind of stuff. So I, I wouldn't do more. Maybe I would pull some, uh, probably not con contrast or anything. Yeah. I, uh, normally I don't, when you work with gradients, I notice that you should not really pull too much and edit in Photoshop, because then you, they can become, you mess them up. You, you should really up. make them in the camera, uh, the images, I mean. And that uh, gradients in general, um, you work with these uh, pieces of uh, cardboard or, or foam board, and you move uh, you move uh, these pieces back and forth, and, and and with the modeling light, and then you see actually on the shiny surface what's happening. Yes, exactly. You can look with your eye, of course, but I like to like we did. We had the live view on. Yeah. And then I look at the screen with the modeling light on, and then I just, I'm looking with my eyes and what do I like? Yeah. And then I just place it where it looks nice to reflect, where it ref reflects nice on the product. Yeah. So I'm gonna shift over here. I put the uh, PC deliberately far away from me <laughs> to make it difficult. Um, uh, oh, you get, uh, Mar Martin Brodsky said you get banding in the gradient. Exactly. Thank you, Mark. So don't mess with the edit. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and also, I wanted to take a look at a couple of images uh, that you've taken uh, and you shared with us. 
like this one, uh, a, a perfume bottle, some water, and is, this is again one light, right? This is, yes, this is one light. Yeah. No, sorry, two. It's two. Um, should I show on the... Um, the main light is for the water and the reflection of this. And there is one, I had a D2 to lit up this with ah. a small grid. So otherwise this will be total black. The neck of the bottle, yeah. Because otherwise uh, it will be totally dark. So it's two, but all the main light in the water where is, um, yes, it's a D2. And this is one I shot on my channel. It's very, it's a, um, it's a very popular video. I don't know why, but people <laughs> like it. So that's nice. Yeah. Someone said it's because it's yellow. People are drawn to yellow, warmer images. So you should shoot more warmer <laughs> images. <Ooh. laughs> and I think if we look at the next one, it's not warmer. Oh, <laughs> no, take it away. <laughs> it's the, the opposite. Yes. Uh, this was a sub's choice uh, with uh, Sebastian, a friend of mine, a um, photographer. And we did this computer, yes. He yeah. brought, brought this computer, uh, Hewitt and Packard. So we shot this and we spent a lot of time to get all the gradients nice. Yeah, but you didn't do a composite here. It's, it's no, it's, it's all in camera, Yeah, 100%. That's cool. And this is a nice still life. We used this <laughs> one for the event uh, on, on the Facebook invitation. Yeah. What can you tell us about this guy? This little image. This is for this is shot for a cookbook uh, for a restaurant in the old town of Stockholm, Sweden, uh, called the Flying Elk. The Flying Elk. So yeah. it's um, it's uh, part of a series. Uh, it's, this is for the dessert, and then we shot for like meat uh, starters and and yes for all this chapters so um, yes. and this is one of the uh, one thing that I see here uh, which is um, uh, the shadows on the left side of the image we have the uh, the stronger light and you have the shadows that's a really nice effect and I know that on this image it's done with the multi-spot yeah the multi-spot and that multi -spot. yeah and that is that is a really cool uh, solution but it, it is expensive so you would have to buy a generator yeah. and then you would have to buy the multi-spot so it's not something that can be used by everybody but there are ways that you can replicate this absolutely and and um, it's just uh, you, you can make your own gobo like you take just a foam board and cut some uh, stripes in it and place it very close to and the subject you're shooting, not yes. close to the flash. Absolutely not. Yeah. The flash should be very far away and as small as possible. And then you can, you can actually adjust the flash depending how sharp you would like them to be. The I mean, shadow edges. Yes. Yeah. And so, because so, I, I, I really like that. It's really cool uh, effect and very creative. Because we wanted to. This is actually. Uh, you know, when you do uh, work with clients, there is sometimes you do everything yourself. This is, we worked with uh, a set designer, one of the best in the world, I would say. Niklas Hansen is called. So I work together with him and also the client. So he's, he's kind of like the stylist for the food. Exactly. Yeah. And then together we, and then we try to find, me and the client trying to find, I. I would try to find light that the client would like, you know. Uh, we're working very closely, especially with this uh, company, yeah. the Francien group. Uh, we work very closely um, to get the result we want. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful uh, image, I'd say. Very beautiful. And this one, I like this one, uh, this Nike shoe. Yeah. Uh, in the air. Exactly. I mean, uh, d d tell me, how, how, how do you work? How do you get it suspended up in the air? Uh, Actually, I have a, a GIF animation on this. Maybe I can post it later. Uh, where it goes from the raw image to the after, the retouched one. Yeah. So everything disappears and it becomes like this. I would but but do, you, do you, you actually have it up in, in is it fish lines or what? Uh, um, it's a C stand. 
without anything. I turn it around, the C-stand, the end of the, and it uh, actually goes in like this just. And ah. the arm goes out like this, and just hanging on the scene stand. And this is fish line. To, I cut, uh, yeah. I tied two fish lines on this. Um, that's it, actually. So it's just that's hanging. That's pretty creative. That's really neat. That's and a good uh, idea. I've never thought of, of actually using the the C stand because it was you would think that it's a uh, yeah. And uh, it's important not to forget to take a shot without the shoe. Because when you uh, would take away in Photoshop the C stand arm, you absolutely need to have a the clean background. background. Otherwise, oh, you are yes, with the gradients and everything, because you have this green. Yes, and then it becomes very easy actually. Yeah, and it's important to do it straight after, so nothing is moved, no lights are moved one centimeter. You know, you just take this final shot, and then you just take it out, and then you take a clean background, and then you can retouch it much more easily in Photoshop. Cool. So so here, uh, when I question about the, what's the uh, the surface th that you are uh, shooting on? Is this is a marble uh, table we stole from a bar, nearby bar. We, w uh, we went in there. It's actually the same owner. So, But we went <laughs> in there. Oh, this is very nice. Because you see all these marks from beers and <laughs> yeah, drinks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we thought it was like kind of a bit uh, rough and nice. So we, s we, t we, we took that table and we used it for the whole shot for this cookbook. Cool. Uh, so when you find something, you should steal it. Steal no, it. No, no, no. You <laughs> borrowed it. Borrow. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and this is also a very interesting uh, image. Yes. And what I like specifically on this one is, is your, your workflow or, or the process on how you worked uh, into this image. Yeah, well... Because there's a quite <laughs> a distance between the flowers and the, the branch with the watch on it, right? Yes, it's probably like one and a half or two meters or something. So when you do a shot like this, I always start from the back and building the light forward to the product. Yeah. So I start with the, with the one at the back light and I think I have some kind of maybe a reflection or I don't remember if we have, maybe that's a flash for the flowers and uh, I also have a flash on the background that I created myself. I painted like a rough background. I put a very soft flash there. And it's very far away, this. Yeah. And then also there is a flash on top of this uh, background um, that goes through. And then they have this branch. And then, so you start with the background and once you have that set, then you move over to the main object, uh, which is the watch here, and then you yes. start lighting uh, the watch. Because yes. if you do it the other way around, you know, you start to have, oh, now the watch looks fantastic, and then you started to mess around with the backlight, backlight and everything, and it will destroy the product, you know. Yeah. So it's better to do it from the back and then move, move forward. forward. Good learning for all you guys out there. Start from the back. Yeah. And this is also one of my <laughs> favorite shots. Uh, <laughs> Uh, not only for the image, but, but mainly for the watches, because this is one of my... Uh, Patek Philippe. Yeah, I love the Pateks. Uh, they're really nice. And of course, this watch is solid gold. Yeah. And, and costs about uh, maybe 80,000 euros. Probably. E, yeah. I should not be surprised. If yeah, somewhere around that. So, very pricey picture. <laughs> yes, um, but it was an idea I had. This was actually in the beginning when I started to do Still Life. Um, I had an idea that I wanted to put, I actually walked in the store and I saw tea with, uh, now I will not remember the name of the uh, Blåklint. Uh, oh, like a, a flower. A yeah. blue flower inside this black tea. It was so beautiful and it reminded me of my own watch that is black and blue. So I was thinking, what will happen if you throw some luxury watches in tea? So this is the whole idea. And I sent it to Swiss Magazine and said, this is, this is a good idea. Yes, it is, they said. So then I started to do these uh, shoots for magazines. And I think the call you made to Patek Philippe was uh, probably the, <laughs> the funniest. You need to tell that story. On. 
you, you crazy Swedish photographer calls Patek Philippe and say that you're going to shoot the pi picture with their watches on, on T. Yes, and what? they would not answer if I didn't name drop the magazine name, you know, and then there was no problem. They sent me everything I needed without any problem. Um, and, yeah, and you got the watches and, and you had to sign the contracts where you needed the armed guards and yes. safes and everything, which is uh, <coughs> recently, I mean, we, which is understandable considering how much the, the watches uh, cost, actually. Yes. So that was a series of like eight pictures with different, um, different watches. Yeah. yeah, so that's really cool. And next time, if you have any, any watches over, just throw them in my direction. <laughs> I'll take care of them, don't Especially worry. Especially the Patek, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, that's yeah. a nice watch. One day when I'm uh, grown up, I'll, I'll, I'm going to own... Maybe you can watch. sell the Phase 1. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not going to sell the Phase 1. That's <laughs> I like it too much. So. Uh, joke. Yeah. So now we are at the... Uh, you know, it's funny as it is, one hour has gone. Um, this is Fra Francien, actually, Stefan VDK. Who is the client? What do you mean, Stefan? Oh, I think that was with the uh, uh, with with food. Uh, the client was uh, the Francien group, right? Yes. Do you mean the the Flying Elk? Yes. Yeah, and and then the shoe came afterwards. So with, it was somewhere in, around the shoe or the food, but uh, with the food. Probably he, he, he means the, the Francien group. Now we said it twice. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah okay. so that was, uh, which is a very nice restaurant. We did talk about it uh, in the beginning. So Stefan, since you didn't join early in the call, you missed out. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to do, watch the rerun. It will be there. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, now we have, I think, the most fun part, the tips and tricks part. Oh. So I, I know you, you, I've asked you to you know, give, uh, give some tips and tricks for, for the viewers. And, uh, and I was expecting some uh, simple, like uh, I always use uh, two-stop, uh, F-stop, uh, savage paper, or uh, use uh, heavy metal cardboard or something. But you came up, actually up with, with the three really good ones. Uh, mm -hmm. For me, that, that I felt are relevant for uh, any, photog any type of photography. So, the tips and tricks from Martin Butvidsson. And the first one is, be the go-to guy in one category, focus. Tell us a little bit more about that one. Well, it's about, um, you should really find your niche. I mean, you should try to narrow it down, what you're shooting when you start out. I didn't do this. I see many don't do this. You are all over the place. You have landscape pictures. Yes, in you your have portfolio. wedding pictures. You have some uh, product shots. You have some models. You know everything. But you really need to. I didn't believe in this. I must say, to quite recently. But I realize now that you really need to be the. You should be. Should learn something really, really good. The more specific, the better it is. Maybe yeah. you only shoot motorcycles. And then you will, if you do it good, you put in your 10,000 hours, and then you will be the go-to guy. For and that type of shot. Exactly. Yeah. And, but then you say maybe, but I want to do other things. Yes, when you become the specialist, the star, then you can start to spread out. Then it can be broader. And you had a good example. Slatan Ibrahimovic. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's... Football player. I mean, he yeah. was really good in football, and he became the star. Exactly, and now he's doing like, I think he's doing underwear and perfumes and everything. What do you think would happen with him if he started with some perfume? I want to design some underwear and I want to play bits of soccer, you know. Yeah. He would never be this the star. So, so first he become a star, now he can do whatever he would like. Exactly, now we can do toothbrushes and it would sell. Exactly, so start, yes, really start, focus. Yeah, focus. Focus on one thing. That's why you see these food photographers. They are really niched on only this. So become the go-to guy in one category, and then you can spread. And then it. you can do whatever you like. Good tip. I will go and change my portfolio right away when I come home. Actually, <laughs> I recently just dumped all my um, portraits. Yeah. Because now it's only still life, I think, yeah. on my website. Because clients can be very confused uh, when they come in. What, yeah. what is he doing? You know. 
is an, a real an expert in this uh, food photography. I see he's doing landscape. He's all over the place, and they yeah. get confused, and then they go away. Probably. Yeah. Second tip. Collect shadows. Collect shadows, and that's an interesting one. I really like that one. And yeah, Tell I'll me. I always collect shadows. What do you do? You put them in the bag, or how yes, do you collect the shadows? Put them in the backpack. <laughs> no, I, t I take my phone, and I oh, when I see a shadow, inside, outside, the sunlight or artificial light, I always take a shot, and I collect them in the folder. Because it's... Um, it's really good to study shadows and how they behave, and then you can you can copy that copy that into you your photography. And you, you showed me one example of where you were outside when you had the sun shooting through a fence. Yes, and you saw all the outside our flat. We had the sun. I just and we had the fence and they were going very parallel these shadows yeah. towards me, and I took a shot immediately because if I tried to do this. I really need to, I can go back to that picture, this is what the sun does, and then yeah. I can do it in the studio, hopefully. Yeah. If I have a bigger studio, probably I need to have... Yeah, <laughs> we can come over here and Yes, and here, here, <laughs> here we can do it. And then, uh, and this one, the last tip is, is probably more around uh, still life photography, which is... Work in the dark. Yeah. Yes, because... And, and we noticed that uh, a lot when we were uh, shooting here with the we have some lights like long long very long uh, fluorescent lights yeah, uh, it was reflecting very much into the product it was very hard to see what you're doing you know yeah so and as you were using the modeling light and moving around this card was trying to find the gradients and it was just ruined because of the ambient light so you really need to work in the dark when you do still and life photography. and I think when you start starting out I think it's easier to understand also when you are completely dark I, I used to say close your eyes this is the first frame I mean it should be completely dark we're in the dark room even if we have this ambient light you know yeah and then you put on one flash you start with the molding light and then you will see exactly what you do especially if you use in live view yeah it's a very good way Cool. Uh, oh, Bishop says hi from the wilderness. Yeah, he's way out in the bush. Ah, oh, uh, hello. <laughs> hello, David. Um, yeah, so, so that's a good way to start. So that when you're in the dark, you, you see actually what the flash will do. Absolutely. And when you, now we, we were kind of tough. We only had one light source. Yeah. But if you have several light sources, you, uh, then you also mentioned that you work with one light at the time. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a very common mistake, I think, that you turn on more than one flashes and you start to move one and then you start to move the other one and suddenly you don't know wh what... Which one is doing which what. Which one is doing what. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, still life photography is really tricky. It's, it's, it's probably one of the toughest ones, but also a lot of fun. Yes, it's it, a yes. lot of fun it, and it, it takes a lot of patience and, uh, you know, millimeter precision and, uh, and then you know get into the zone <laughs> and it's so um, so fun to create something that's never been created before with light I mean creating something beautiful that's never been done before probably yeah uh, not exactly the way you're doing it that's my real passion for it because every image will, is unique yeah uh, with the the shape and depending on how you position them and what angles Absolutely. and everything, so it's uh, it's a lot. But I would clearly recommend people to try it out at ho even I mean at home. You don't need need a lot of space. No. Uh, you need uh, some diffusion paper. You need some grids. Grids is always good because that limits the the spread of light. Yeah. And uh, and take anything. I mean, if it's a banana or if it's a lipstick or or whatever, and and start playing around and 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 see what happens and, how, and, and shoot that. Mm. I see um, uh, Sulan, Matthias, hello. I had to say to hi. Oh, oh, so he was on, online as well. Yeah. Cool. Uh, uh, how much of your early file was an influence in your today's work? Oh, the, the tea and the watch. How much is that influencing your today's work? Uh, the early work that you have done? 
Um, you feel that have you have you evolved completely in a different direction, or are you still in kind of the same? You, you I'm still learning. You know, every shoot you learn something new all the time. Which is interesting to hear. I mean, you are experienced <laughs> photographer, but, but you're still every object is something new. Yeah, and you have to start from scratch. You know, with every object. Okay, you have a lot in your backbone. I mean, you have learned a lot, but you will take this and it will probably go a bit faster for me than... But you really need to experiment and... Uh, yeah. um, and what, what was his question? You, uh, oh, yes, well, of, the, of your early work, uh, the, 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 the Patek watch uh, with T. Um, I think I... I think it's... Uh, I don't know. I learned something that I wouldn't do. And when I look at these pictures, of course, I'm always this... I'd say if I'm a, as a third party, uh, the difference I see in your early work versus mm. your new work is that you are, uh, in your later work, you are more restrictive on where you put the lights. Mm. You're not as, you know, broad. It's just like, it's not a lot, you know, light all over. You are much more controlled with yes. your light and, and working with, you know, Maybe that's true, yeah. That, that's at least the way I see it. And, mm. and now, because now you're really, you're truly painting with light and, and shadows. And it's really yeah. uh, beautiful work. I mean, I'm, see, I'm, a, I'm a big fan myself. So, uh, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you're too, you're too <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and I would really recommend you guys to go over to YouTube uh, and, and search for Boot With Son and uh, and check his channel out because there's a lot of stuff to be learned yes and there's some laughs as well you you, yeah. are, you are a bit quirky and crazy so which is good <laughs> and there will be videos i know i haven't uploaded for quite some time now but i had a a baby boy yeah exactly so that takes time which is a good priority so but there will be more videos coming out yeah. coming out <laughs> Cool, excellent, and uh, I'm sure it's not the last time we see you here. Uh, I'd love to have you over and uh, thanks do for some, having me. Yeah, and uh, do some new challenges. Maybe next time we'll we'll let you use um, some pro stuff as well and and uh, really go all in <laughs> as well. Yeah. But I think the point you made in in this and the way you pulled it off is that you can do still life with. Not so much. I mean, in, in, in theory, we could have used the A1, replaced it with Absolutely. an A1. And uh, so you don't need a lot of stuff. Uh, and you, what you need is creativity, have some idea of what you want to do and, and, uh, and do one thing at a time. And, and uh, Take it easy. Yes. And use your eyes. What, what looks good to you, you know, yeah. is, and take it very slowly. Well... Thank you so much, Martin, for coming over. Thank we you. We have gone way over time. Oops. Yeah, uh, but that's what happens when you have fun <laughs> <laughs> and, and when it's live. And thank you, all you guys out there. Uh, please let us know um, if you like this or not uh, in your comments. If you have uh, more questions, um, I know that uh, you, Martin, you have also actually been in, in uh, commenting and, and, and answering uh, other episodes. Yes. Uh, so which is really a m much appreciated. And so I know that you are really good at responding and answering questions that might pop up. So please do post questions and, um, and we'll be happy to share our knowledge with, with you guys and uh, take a lot of cool images. And uh, uh, until next time, Martin, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. See you guys. Bye bye. Bye bye.